Okay. There are two things that I want to share to you today. God wants us to be transformed in our thoughts, in our thinking pattern about why do we come to church. God wants to change our mindset about the calling of God in our lives. Why we are part of this body of Christ here at Crawford. And number one, this is, uh, this is number one. Take the challenge to change your mindset why you are here. Take the challenge. Okay? Take this challenge to change your mindset why you are here. Jesus, for three years, Jesus, for three years, was with his disciples. Actually, Jesus, when he was born in a manger, and then we would read in Luke that when he was 12 years old, he was brought by his parents to Jerusalem in a feast. And that's all we know about Jesus. We don't know about Jesus when he was a young man. When he was a, 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 a teener, okay? But later on, when he was 30 years old, that's when he appeared and he was baptized by John the Baptist. Now, after that, he started to look call one by one, chose 12 of his disciples. And for three years, he was with his disciples. For three years, he taught his disciples. For three years, he, the disciples saw what he did. He healed the sick. He cast out demons from those who, who are demon-possessed. And they saw how pow the power of Jesus. They saw the wisdom of Jesus that comes from God. Because he taught them. And he is not a, a, a man. He is not a man that, uh, a, a, an educated man. That's why people who saw him do things. Who is this man? Because he's not even a Pharisee, but he knows a lot about the law. And he even rebuked the Pharisees. So right there, the disciples saw him. The disciples really heard him. And he taught them about the kingdom of God that has come and is coming in power. And Jesus made it clear to his disciples that he is the Messiah. And Jesus made it clear why he came. Okay? His purpose. When Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And Jesus said, I chose you, twelve. He showed them. Jesus showed them. That he fulfilled the prophecies about him in the Old Testament. That, he, that these disciples knew the Old Testament. You know why I know that disciples knew the Old Testament? If you remember some of those disciples. Hey, I, we found the Messiah. We found that what, 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 what Moses had, had told. What, the prophecy. So the news came. Oh, this is the man. So they knew the Old Testament. They knew the prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. That's why they were looking for Messiah. And now we, they have Jesus for three years. Oh, this is the one. This is the person. But they never understood Jesus. Even when Jesus rose from the dead... And stayed with them for 40 days. They never understood Jesus. 
they were still thinking of Jesus as a political leader to overthrow the rule of the Romans on God's people, the Israelites. As if they were telling, hey Jesus, come on, kick out this, this, this Roman rule, this, uh, this empire, and let your kingdom reign. They thought of that. Because look what, what, what it says here. And I, I would skip 1 to 5, but I, I, I want to read verse 6. And he said, So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this, at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Hmm. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus appeared to his disciples. Jesus taught them for three years and showed them who he is. Yet, they never understood. Still, they had that mindset of Jesus as a political leader. To lead a revolt against the Roman rule. Why would I say this? Because now they are ruled by the kingdom of Rome. Now they want that is the kingdom of Israel be restored. Now why? Because if you look at the Old Testament, the kingdom of the kingdom of Israel was right there. The first king was King Saul, and then we have King David, and then we have King Solomon. And then the kingdom of Israel was divided into two. The kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of, uh, of, of Israel. And then as, as, as years goes on, they sinned against God. They, they worship idols. So they were brought into captivity by the, by the Babylonians. And from the Babylonians, the Assyrians. From the Assyrians, the Persians. From the Persians, here comes the Grecian Empire. From the Grecian Empire, here comes the, uh, here comes the, uh, the Roman Empire. So they were never, they were never a nation independently. And now they knew that in a prophecy, there will be coming a Messiah to restore Israel. Because that was the prophecy of the prophets in the Old Testament. So right there, they were looking for one. They were waiting for that, for that to, to come to, to be fulfilled. That's why he, when Jesus rose from the dead, glorified with power, and they saw Jesus, a powerful man when he healed the sick, a very wise man, they thought that this is the one. They did never understood, even after three years, their mindset is the same. The same. That's why they said, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Imagine. Well, he's risen from the dead. Hey, this is it. He rose from the dead. He has power. So still, they still have that, that, that thinking. The disciples were missing the point why Jesus chose them to be the church. They were still expecting the resurrected Jesus. Now glorified. Now, when he appeared, he appeared even with closed doors. Oh, wow, this is a powerful man. He was going, going to conquer Ro the Romans. For all those years that they were with Jesus, their mindset of what they know about Jesus, the Messiah, has not changed. Friends,
we have the same problem. If you look, look at the last part that I have read, in verse 10, verse 9, when Jesus went up to heaven, after he said this, he was taken up before them there in their very, eye, very eyes, and the cloud, uh, and cloud him, hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going up. You know what? Listen to this. When Jesus was taken up to heaven, ascended into heaven, they, the disciples, were so frustrated. Why? Ah, he's gone. And when Jesus went up to heaven, they were just looking up intently in the sky standing he's gone now what it's over it's over but an angel came and rebuked buke his disciples and actually according to some passages it's not only the disciples that were there some would say that there are 50 other people who was with there when they saw when they saw Jesus going up to heaven. Everybody got frustrated. Ah, uh, let's go to our own ways. Friends, we as a church has that same problem as the disciples. We see the church as a social club where socializing takes place. We see as a church where we meet friends, meeting good friends, caring friends. Oh, I love that church because people right there are loving, a good and loving church. I feel good when I am in that church. So, you enjoy the fellowship. Amen. Right? So, that has become our mindset of what a church is. We come to church because we know that it is a place well, where our social needs are met. Hey, you come to Crawford. They have good food. Sometimes there's some food that you can, you can take out. Hello? You know, love it. I love the church. Man, after church, when we go home, we don't have to cook rice because we have rice for two days. Because there are extra rice that are, not, uh, that are left and we bring it home. Praise God. It's a blessing. Amen. Hey, some would take, hey, I have this. Now, Look at that. We come to church as our weekend routine, actually. Amen. Hallelujah. After church, we go home to go to our... To, after church, uh, after meal, church and service and meal, we go home. And maybe some of us, we're going to visit the other people. We're going to visit the, our friends or relatives. Or we go to the mall. We go to Valley Plaza. And, and in the evening, or, or, uh, early evening, we go to the movies. It's a family day. Amen. It's a family day. And after going, or we go, or we go to hang out at Tejon and have some shopping. And the next day, same routine, no change, nothing happened, back to work. As same as before until Sunday comes again. Any change? Nah. Same, same person. And in fact, after Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you forgot what the pastor told of the message. Can you remember the message of, of Dwayne last Sunday? 
What is scripture? Can you remember any passage? Praise God. Ha, ha. But today I want to tell you. I want to tell you the church is not what you think it is. The church is more than a social club. It is more than a place where we gather together and worship and enjoy. Singing songs with our talented worship leaders and instrumental players. It is more than a clinic where we come to ask God to heal us. It's more than a, a place where we come and to be prayed for. Because we want the blessing of God. It is more than just singing on our, uh, or sitting on our chairs. Listening to the sermon of the pastor. It's more than that. Who we are. Or who are we really? Do you know who are we? Again, what's the first question? That I, uh, what's the first point that I said? Take the challenge to change your mindset. Why you are here. Take the challenge. Why are you here? Who are we? Listen to this. We are a group of people called by God to continue the work that Jesus has started. Again, we are a group of people, the church, called by God in this particular ministry to continue the work that Jesus has started. You know what? The theme of the book of Acts is showing us how uh, is showing us how the purpose of Jesus' disciples were able to fulfill the great commission. In the in the Gospel of Luke, his first the first book of Luke, the second book of Luke is book of Acts. In in, in the first book, Luke gave the story about who Jesus is and the purpose of Jesus. Why he chose, uh, why he preached, why he, he called people. He chose the 12 disciples. And then in the last part of, the, of, the, of, of Luke, he said he, right there in the last chapter, he opened their eyes. He opened their minds to know who he is. And then he instructed the disciples to wait in the city and instruct him because he said you are witnesses and wait in the city wait there because the Holy Spirit the promise of the Father will come to you so it is a continuation of what Luke had written about Jesus, the ministry of Jesus. Now, that ministry of Jesus was placed on the hands of the disciples, which is now the church. Amen. Which is now in the church. The church. So the book of Acts is written for us to know that Jesus' work is not finished yet. Hello? I don't want to be you to be confused on this. Again, the book of Acts is written for us to know that Jesus' work is not finished yet. It's not over. Yes, he finished his redemptive work at the cross. When he died on the cross and after three days, he rose from the dead. But remember, when, when he was on the cross... He even said before he, he died, before his last breath, it is finished. But his work of saving people is not yet over. And whose responsibility is that? Whose responsibility to go and share Jesus Christ to the people? It's the church. 
It's the church. We. So we are not just gathering here and enjoying one another's fellowship. We are called to be a witness to this world. That's the purpose. So let us change our mindset of who we are. Why we are in this church. Hello? Because for the past years, that's all the mindset that we have. Oh, we enjoyed. We enjoyed the worship. I like this church because they have good musicians, good singers. But it's more than that. That is not the real reason why we are here. Even though there is no instruments right here. Even though there is no uh, worship singing right here. We can go out there and share the gospel. That's the purpose. Hallelujah. But we are so entwined with that. Engulfed with that. Wow. What we want is... We want to be a better, we want to be better, good, and we want to have more instruments and so forth. But we never thought of what can we do? How can we go out? How can we bring people? How can we share the gospel? It's a wake-up call for us. It is a wake-up call for us. Today, God is opening our minds to the reality why we are a church, why we are here in this community. There are times that we would say, uh, years that we would say, we don't want this place. This place is dangerous. This place is not good for a church. We have to look for another place. There are times that we thought about that. But no, we are here for a purpose. We have a mission in this community. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that you know, or that you now are, is conv are convinced, you all are convinced, and believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, that He is your Lord and Savior. I believe that. We as a church are called as witnesses for Christ. Remember that. Our goal is that we are called as witnesses. Why did Jesus call the 12 disciples? He called them so that they would become a witnesses. Amen. That he, they would become a channel of blessing, of salvation that God, through Jesus Christ, offers. For God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. That's the message of the disciples. That's the reason why God called them. You know why the, what's the reason why God called you? That's it. You are, we are witnesses for Christ. This is a challenge for us today. We are called as a witness for Christ. Change our mindset. Hallelujah. Why do we come to church? Change that mindset and say, I come to church because I wanted to be a witness for Christ. I come to church because I wanted to, uh, to know uh, and how to share my faith. I wanted to come to church so that I would be empowered. And I can go out there. And next time I would come, I'll bring someone here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's the purpose why we are here. <coughs> Number two. Number second challenge. To take a step of change. To be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Again, to take that step to change, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Look for, to Luke 24, 49, Jesus said to his disciples, I am going to send 
what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then in Luke, in Luke 1, 1, 4 to 5 in our text, the same thing that, that, that said in Acts 1, 4, 4, 4 and 5. Do not leave Jerusalem, Jesus instructed. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized in water, but in a few days he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Now look at this story. Look at this chapter 1 of the book of Acts. I'll go, go over it again. Jesus wanted to change the mindset of his disciples, of who he is, why he called them. The disciples just thought that Jesus, the Messiah, has come to restore the kingdom of Israel and be a great nation again. And they would be happily ever after and they will be have a good life as a nation. But that's not the reason. Jesus wanted to change that mindset. And it can only be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hello? But because when his disciples said, listen to this. And I, I, I was studying the book of Acts in chapter 1. And look at this. When, when the disciples said, when are you going? In verse 6. Lord, are you going at this time to restore the kingdom of Israel? And then Jesus said, it's not me. It, it, or it's not you to know the times. But then he said, but you will receive power. Hello? And the answer of, of Jesus when, when his disciples asked, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? But the answer of Jesus, but you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come to you. And you will be witnesses hello that's the reason why we are here that's the reason why we are a church so that's the reason why we come to church now let us change that mindset hello Let's change that that thinking. Well, God use the, well God use those those things why you come to church. God will use that for you to know today that you have a, a greater purpose, a better purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just want to share to you this. What is the significance of that Jerusalem? Because in, in Luke chapter 24, verse 45, Jesus said, stay in the city. And then in Acts 2, uh, Acts 1, verse 4, it said, do not leave Jerusalem. Jerusalem, why in Jerusalem? Why Jerusalem? What is the significance of that place, Jerusalem? It is a place where the temple is. It is a city representing the place where the presence of God is. The disciples with some other believers stayed in Jerusalem, obeyed Jesus, and they went to the upper room. Why upper room? Why not in the temple? Because of their lives. Because of Jesus they are being persecuted and they might be arrested so they went to an upper room on a room and right there they waited for the Holy Spirit so 
if you think about what 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 the Canyon Hills use the upper room the upper room experience it got they have that in Acts chapter 1 the upper room so what is your upper room because in the upper room the disciples with other people all in all 120 prayed and waited for the promise your Jerusalem or your upper room might be in your in your bedroom alone with God it might be on your on a prayer meeting right here on every Tuesday it might be here at the altar is your upper room is your Jerusalem or it might be some other time you go, you go to a service you go to another church and there's there's a challenge uh, to if you want to receive the Holy Spirit you want to receive the empowerment if you if you have that in other churches and even here in, in, in any in any altar call hey I want you to do this I want you to crave for it I want you to be thirsty and to hunger for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit do not hesitate and say uh, no I don't want you know do not hesitate but go and seek the presence of God seek the giver seek Jesus in your life be, hung, be hungry and thirsty for Jesus and you know what? This will happen when we will receive the Holy Spirit empowerment. This will happen. This was prophesied by Ezekiel. If you open your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 36. <coughs> verse 26 to 27. Ezekiel 36. 26 and 27. It said... I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You know what? When we have the Holy Spirit, when we become empowered by the Holy Spirit, God will give us a new heart. Amen. You will never be the same again. Because the Spirit will move you. Because your heart of stone that is so disobedient will become a heart of flesh. That you will just look at people. And we would see that they need Jesus Christ. Amen. Because you will be changed. Your heart will be changed when you will. When the Holy Spirit will come into you. Will live in you. Hello. And not only that. The Spirit will move you. To follow what Jesus wants you to do. It's not you, no longer you, that, oh, that, that you would push yourself to do it. Because the Holy Spirit will just do that. The Holy Spirit will just make that hey, come and go and do it. In your feet, in your hands, in your eyes, will just go out there. And do what the will of God is. We will become a different person. A changed person. No longer to be afraid uh, and ashamed of speaking out about Jesus' love. We, became, we will become empowered as a church. And serve him. And we will not be ashamed to invite our friends to come to church. Sometimes we are ashamed. Sometimes we don't want. Sometimes uh, maybe it's not yet time, you know. 
But when we have the Holy Spirit, when we are empowered, there will be no. Uh, we, we will be. We will be having a convincing power from our from our words when we speak out. That would come from the Holy Spirit. Every word of encouragement that we would say to people would be with power. We will no longer be hesitant to pray for someone who needs prayer. Maybe in our in our job sites. Maybe on the streets. Maybe anywhere. Where, where we go, maybe on, 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 in McDonald's or somewhere else. Because we will be changed. Changed people. We will be changed. Amen. Do you want to be changed? Crave for the Holy Spirit. From a boring plastic attendee. Sorry to, see, to say that. From a boring plastic attendee to an active, loving, and caring Christian. Always ready and available to serve God. You will find a way to come to the prayer meeting. You'll find a way to come for a discipleship. You'll find a way to say, hey, I wanted to have a Bible study. You find a way with that. Because you are, will be craving for more and more and more of him. If you have the Holy Spirit living in you. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Or if the Holy Spirit is not. Listen to this. If the Holy Spirit is not in charge of us. As a church. Or as an individual, we become we become easily distracted by the world. Listen to this: when the Holy Spirit is not in charge, we, if the Holy Spirit is not fully in charge with us, we will be distracted by the world. We lose sight of the mission of the church. We lose sight of of the reason why we are a Christian. We lose sight of people. Of, of, of thinking that hey, the people need the Lord. It's not only me. We can do church activities. We can do church programs. We, can, we could be a better worship team. But the power to move people to respond to the gospel is not there if we don't have the Holy Spirit empowerment you can sing and you can have a good voice here if you don't have the Holy Spirit if you don't have that power what really matters if you would know if you have if you can share the gospel to other people it's not just like singing right here it's not just like playing right here but what counts listen to this what counts is not just serving here or doing things right there in the kitchen or whatever. What counts for God is when you are a witness, a channel of blessing, of salvation to others. Hello? How many have you encountered how many people have you encountered and have shared the gospel hmm none right see you are missing the point why you are going to church hello so this is a challenge for us to make a change. Change your mindset. Why you are a Christian. Hello? Change that. Hello? Let us take the challenge to change. Change our mindset. Or 
of who we are as part of the church. We are not called as casual Christians. Again, we are not called as casual Christians. We are called to serve as witnesses. And second, let us desire to change by longing to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Today, do not resist change. We want to see this church to make a difference in this community. We want this church to make a difference in the city of Bakersfield. We want to see this church to make a change, not only here in the United States of America, in California, but to the uttermost part of the world. Because Acts 1.8, it says, you will be witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. This is a challenge for us. This is a challenge for us. So today is the day that we have to make a decision. Again, do not resist change. Change sometimes is so difficult. Because when you have that mindset of what the church is, what a Christian is, you will never, you would say, this is, this is it. I don't want to change. I know, and this is it. I cannot change. There's a challenge for us. Let us change our mindset of what the church is. Amen. 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 Come on, let's all stand together. And let's make that drastic change. The change is a process. Change is a process. I wouldn't tell you this. Change is a process. It's not change will not come instantly. Change as you crave for that change. Change is a process. Come on. Let's bow down our heads right now. And make that decision. Pray to God right now. Pray to God right now. And make that change. Make that change. Hallelujah. 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 Pray to God. That God will take your heart and think that I am a witness for Christ. That I need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, just speak to the Lord right now. And just tell, tell the Lord, I want to be a witness for you. I don't want to be just sitting there and doing nothing. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a channel of blessing. I know God has spoken to some of you. If not all. The Holy Spirit just break your hearts. The Holy Spirit just, just told you in your innermost being. The Holy Spirit is saying to you. Yes, I want. I want you. I want you. I want you. And as we do the communion today, let's think about that. Let's think about this. I want to be transformed, Jesus. I want to be like you. 
I want to be like you. And I want to be like the 120 in the upper room. That when they were filled by the Holy Spirit, they began to gather together. They began to be active. They began to, to pray for one another and share one another's burden. Share those who are in need. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, and daily people were added in their number because their mindset was changed of who, or who what their purpose is, why Jesus has called them. Friends, let's make that change. Let's make that change. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's continue to be in the